Hello, uh, welcome. I hope you're ready for some hate speech here. I'm about to read a poem. <laughs> so this is called The Rape of Ireland. Prowling the streets, Islamic deadbeats, prey on the weak, in darkness they sneak, plunder and rape, a hellish landscape, with devilish green, wolves in sheepskin. Culture war raging, heathen rampaging, can courage be found by people spellbound, cover up galore, the media ignore, direct public opinion from loss of dominion. What will it take to make young men wake, defend the homeland by word and by hand, brutes at the gate with hearts full of hate, seeking to maim our true Christian flame? Lord, pour your grace on this old noble race, this ancient soil our grandfathers did toil. Save our blood and breath from a living death. Gail, be devoted and strong forever lifelong. So that's just a poem I wrote. And uh, the reason why I wrote that is I'm just going to put a link to a, a, a news article um, in, the, in the description box below. Um, just detailing about, no sorry, from a, an RTE account, just detailing uh, what's happening that there's a uh, Muslim rape gangs uh, grooming gangs have moved into Ireland just like they have in the UK and they, they're uh, they're at work and they're organized <coughs> and they're you know they're uh, they're doing what what they what they do what they've done in the UK and uh, I'll also put a link to a uh, um a tweet a tweet that I saw uh, that um that shows the uh, increase in sexual assaults all over Ireland um, I think it's up nearly 400% in Wexford. It's up like 1,200% in Clare, uh, and it's up all over the country. And uh, we we know the reason why it's up. You know, it's it's not uh, you know for these these huge numbers. Um, it's you know men from a certain culture that are that are uh, coming in here that are driving these numbers up. You know. So um, yeah, there's a couple of things I just want to talk about. Uh, like the last video I put up, and I, I put out 10 solutions that would that I think would help Ireland recover in the future and uh, um, you know one of them was uh, the introduction of the death penalty for for uh, people in high public office uh, now I, I said it in the video I don't agree with the death penalty in general you know if somebody is a murderer or uh, you know commits a heinous crime that I think that they you know there's a chance of rehabilitation unless it's something like a serial killer that's killed like you know crazy amount of people you probably, there's probably no chance of rehabilitation I, I'm sure that you know, but but most people uh, they do have a chance for rehabilitation. So, but the reason why I would introduce the death penalty for politicians and high public officials is because uh, these people are you know they're intelligent, they're uh, you know they're hard, they're ambitious. They they've dedicated their life to climbing that you know that ladder, that p political and uh, power power ladder, and they're uh, you know they're uh, they're they're ruthless. Most of them are ruthless, and um, I think uh, you know just the. the that that should be taken into account that you get all these um these perks when you get into that high public office you get you know you're 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 basically looked after you're never going to have to worry about money you're you're going to have a state pension you're going to have a big salary you're going to have uh, you know all these kind of uh, all the status and um, you know as long as you do the job properly but you know if you do the, if you if you are uh, do the job um, and and you know benefit enrich yourselves uh, or enrich your friends and and you know through corruption then I think that you should pay the ultimate price just because, you know, you, you knew what you were getting into before you got in before you did it. It's like a boxer going into the ring, you know. There's a there's a chance. It's a small chance, but there's a chance you could die. Every boxer knows that they take responsibility. I think it should be the same with politics, politicians, and and high up civil servants that they know when they get into the game. You know, there's a lot of there's there's rewards, but there's a chance that you could die. <laughs> And uh, I don't, th I don't think that that's controversial. I think that's actually a, a politically sound idea. It just keeps weak people and psychopathic people away from that because they're the ones who are running the country and they're the ones who cause it havoc. And if there's a chance that they'll die, they won't do it. They'll go into a different field. And um, so it's just, it's just a. Uh, for me, it's not even controversial, you know. Um, now I just want to talk about a few, one or two things like the. The thing I want to talk about in this video is like, you know, uh, like it's, it's, it's the idea of destiny, I suppose, you know. I suppose I'm thinking the title of this video is going to be yeah, that you can't serve, uh, you know, God and you can't and the world. You can't serve both. You can only serve one. You can only have one master. I'm just going to read this as well. This is from uh, Matthew uh, 624. So no man can serve two masters. For either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will be loyal to one and, and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. 
okay so I, I wrote that down because I'm I'm not good at um, remembering stuff verbatim I, I kind of paraphrase stuff you know so uh, but I'm trying to improve on that so mammon is like you know money in the world and and we have all our leaders and most pe most people in the world at the moment are are serving you know mammon which is self-interest you know and um, I think that needs to change and um, because uh, I think that uh, especially especially Gaelic people we have like a, a destiny a spiritual destiny and this is not a this would not be a popular idea today because the even our identity is is, un, is, is, is has been questioned you know the idea of an ethnic identity as a Gaelic people that that's somehow seen as a as racist to establish you know and and, and recognize your own ethnic identity because of your, your skin because your skin is lighter than than other other uh, races so now it's evil but um you know but there, there has been no more uh, uh, oppressed uh, people in Europe than, than the Gaelic people over the, over the, the last uh, several hundred years you know the Germanic peoples uh, all across Europe and from Britain uh, mo almost wiped out the Gaelic people you know so there, there is a last bastion here in Ireland and places in Wales and Scotland of Gaelic people still uh, you know still si surviving and thriving so I think it's important um, you know that we recognize our our ethnicity our Gaelic uh, ancestry you know and um, you know the other thing as well is like when it comes to uh, like I, I believe that Gaelic people have a destiny a, a, it's, a, it's a significant spiritual destiny for the future of mankind like the you know Gaelic people can't compete with uh, with uh, British people or with uh, Germanic people or French people when it comes to civilization building when it comes to engineering or manufacturing or war making it's not saying that Gaelic people aren't good at those things but we're, we're not as good as the Germanic people at it they're better at that stuff but we are a different kind of people we're more spiritual people and you can see that in our in our um, the way we uh, use language especially uh, our music our art um, you know I think one important thing was during the dark ages uh, our, our you know Christianity almost uh, was almost uh, extinguished from Europe and it, tri it thrived in Ireland and then uh, Irish monks and teachers went out to the rest of Europe and uh, re uh, recatechized or you know re brought back the faith to the, to the, to the uh, to the Europeans you know I, I think that we have a similar destiny in the in the future I think that our job here as in the Gaelic nation of Ireland is to not let the globalists destroy this country so because they are going to destroy a lot of countries but don't let them destroy our country so that when the time comes we'll be able to uh, go back out and educate the other uh, Europeans about all the history that they've lost and, and their, uh, their identity and etc etc because it's like in 1984 the George Orwell's book he said like every history book would be rewritten you know or has been rewritten and I think that that's happening right now before our eyes and um, and the truth is with this globalist agenda some countries are going to fall and some countries won't and um, at the moment the globalists appear on the surface be, to be winning but I think in here in Ireland I, I just think it, I have a strong feeling it's our destiny to, to uh, to, to uh, defeat the globalists in our own land, drive them out and then preserve our culture and then we will be able to educate the future Europeans about their own culture because these globalists are going to destroy everything. Um, yeah, so and that's a, uh, yeah, so that's, that's I, I think we have a destiny and I, I, that's not being taught. This, this idea is so alien to people. It's not, you know, uh, it's like Patrick Pierce, uh, who is the father of our nation, and he called the educational system a murder machine and I have come to realize it is a murder machine it literally kills the character of the per of the people and um, that 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 are uh, that are educated in it you know he set up a school and um, I think it was called St Ibar's and it was based on a, a, a more ancient form of education where um, you had a the teacher it was more of a what would you call it more of a uh, a kind of a paternal figure and they, they took the uh, students the, uh, the disciples and they, they kind of uh, it was a holistic approach to education like that like like they would have had between with Socrates Plato Aristotle and Aristotle taught Alexander the Great hello so he took that kind of model which is an ancient model of education and produces you know far superior um, you know men and women and um, you know because it teaches them it doesn't just teach them you know random uh, you know bits of information like here's how to you know do some tech draw and here's a little bit of history here's a little bit of geography 
it teaches them from a holistic perspective, you know, and also it teaches them that they have a, a spiritual identity and they have, a, you know, and that they should cultivate this and this is integral, uh, you know, it's, 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 it's the, part, the spiritual identity, the identity is what unifies all the information, all the other subjects that you that you learn about and the purpose of the education is to, is to develop this the spiritual character um, so that you can go out and be a force for good in the world. Now we're not taught that in school. We're taught random subjects and it's almost as if they have little or no relation to one another. And the idea is you sit for sit an exam and you get a certain score and then you can go on to university and it's like, you know, it's, just, it's not a real education. It's a murder machine and it's murdering the people. And, um, you know, so, uh, yeah, so that's, yeah, I, I, but I don't, I don't see that. It's not an easy thing to change at the moment because, you know, the, the public education system is so pervasive and you know it's, it's spread all over all over the uh, the western world and it, you know but i think a, a kind of a return to an old style or a, at least a, 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 at least have the option of a, of a different form of education now homeschooling has become popular and I, I think that's a great idea if you meet people who are homeschooled you'll find that they are far more uh, intelligent uh, and well-read and work and uh, and um, than, than people who attend public school in general you know um, second there. Now, the other thing I want to talk about is just that uniqueness. If we're, uh, I, I don't want to see the, you know, I don't want to see like what's happening at the moment with the globalist agenda is like, excuse me, they're telling everybody, especially if you're European, that your race is not important, that your ethnicity is not important. You know, and everyone's just basically sit the same, and it's you know it's interchangeable. Everybody's interchangeable. You can get an African, and he, if we just stick him in there, he'll be the same as an Irish guy. <laughs> you know, but that, that's 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 not the same. We're not the same. We're we're completely different. We have different personalities. We have different characters, not just at the individual level, but at our at our uh, national, at our you know at the level of the people of of the uh, you know of, of the level of the um, um yeah of the people yeah. So. We have our own character. We have our own personality. We have our, we're unique, just like each individual is unique. Each uh, each ethnicity is also unique, and um, and you can't just substitute one in for the other. That's the globalist kind of machine, like godless agenda. You know what I mean? You can just put anything, you know, like we're cogs in a machine. You know, um, but one thing about the Irish, like I said before, we can't compete with other Europeans when it comes to, uh, and you know, maybe manufacturing or. Um, you know, trade and things like that. You know, one thing we're just in a smaller country, so we just don't have those resources. But um, but one thing that we do have uh, in Ireland is 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 our is, we have a, a, str a very strong spiritual tradition, and um, and we have our the way we use language. It's different than the way other uh, Europeans use use language. You know, like even it, like you know, if you listen to a and now we lost our language. I, I can't, unfortunately, I can't speak Irish. I am also a product of the murder machine, <laughs> so I don't uh, I don't have much uh, very little Irish, unfortunately. But one thing I, I do know, I have noticed over the years is Irish people when they speak English, it's a completely different way of speaking English, um, and there's uh, it, 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 it's um, it's far more interesting than when you hear English people. And I'm not knocking English people. But like we speak your language better than you do, you know, um, and it's just, that's because we have a Gaelic spirit. It's just a different spirit than the, uh, you know, than the. It's, it's just a different, it's, you know, different. Not saying it's better. It's just unique. You know, I'm not saying anyone's better than anybody else. Just better at some things, worse at others. That's the way life is, you know. But um, but we do have a unique way of using the English language, and you can see that in our. History, you know, we've got some of the, from such a small, tiny nation, we've got some of the greatest poets and writers that come out of Ireland. Um, you know, disproportionately high number of, uh, of uh, you know, uh, uh, winners of Nobel, uh, Nobel Prizes for Literature and, and stuff like that, you know. And um, so I think that, oh, I think that, uh, I think that we, we need to hang on to that because I think that's going to be very important in the future when the globalist agenda fails and uh, and European people are going to be looking for a way to uh, to re-educate their uh, you know the, uh, re-educate the people about 
you know what it is to be uh, European you know and I think the Irish people have a the Gaelic people have a great uh, as educators for the future as a kind of a you know a storehouse of of a of our of our of the character of the European people you know what I mean we we can uh, we could share that in the future with with the with the people who are going to be some of them some nations will be irrevocably damaged by this uh, you know by this uh, globalist agenda because you know we're heading into a, a different thing as transhumanism and all this kind of crazy crazy stuff you know so now uh, the other thing is like it's uh, that like we're at the moment at the moment we're in what is essentially a spiritual war um, it's not, uh, you know, we don't have troops, we don't have troops garrisoned around around Ireland at the moment, um, you know. So, but we don't, they don't need the garrison troops around Ireland, not yet, because, you know, they have uh, the television. <laughs> you know, they're using that as a weapon, and they, you know, they can lock people up just by putting the fear fear into them, and they lock themselves up, you know. And uh, so they're, they don't need to have soldiers on the streets, um, you know. And telling people, you know, they can and can't go anywhere, and most people will just do it themselves if you if you hit them with hard enough with the propaganda. So, so they don't. It's a different type of warfare. It's more sophisticated now than it was in the past. Like you know, at the time of the nineteen sixteen rising, it's it's far. You know, when they when they did have British troops garrisoned around the country, you know, it's far more sophisticated now, uh, and it's it's more difficult to, uh, in many ways, to fight against because you can't go out, go out and. Um, you know, it, it, you can't fight against it because it's not a direct attack; it's an indirect attack. And the indirect attack, ultimately, it's like the, Our Lady of Fatima said, like you know, the final, uh, the final battle will be uh, for the family, and that's what's happening. We're seeing that now. You know, it's a uh, you know really, you know, they're they're are, you know taking away the rights of of the natural family. We call it, um, you know, and, and kind of handing out uh, all these kind of. Uh, rights to people who uh, you know I, I don't want to go into it just because you know if I start going into it maybe I can qualify as you know as, as the dreaded hate speech so um yeah so it's a uh, yeah so that's it it's the it's, it's a spiritual war and the way and the way to get I think the way to, to fight against it is to re-establish our spiritual identity our Christian identity uh, and our Gaelic our ethnic identity to understand that we have the blood of our ancestors running through our veins, that the soil that we walk on is, uh, you know, is, 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 is ours. It doesn't belong to anybody else. It doesn't belong to other people from other races or the cultures. They can come here and be guests. It will never be theirs. They have no inheritance for this land at all. And um, you know, and we have to impress that upon upon um, Irish people because they've, you know, at the moment Irish people are weak because they're at there, there have been waged war has been waged on them, and they don't realise it. And I think the primary weapon in this war is the television, and also the internet, and especially pornography, which has made people, young Irish people, very weak. I think just docile, and you know they've lost their fighting spirit because you know lots of people porn addiction is a is a major problem, you know. So, um, but most people don't realise at the moment during the spiritual war they've been lulled to sleep. You know, but I think that's going to change. I think the, um, I think very soon. I, I'm, and I hope I'm wrong, but something's coming soon. Now I don't know what it is. Is it going to be like a big surge of, uh, of, of deaths from the? Um, they'll tell you, you know, it's a new variant, the, the new variant BS twenty four seven, but it won't be a, the variant. It'll be the poison that was injected into the blood of the people. You know, that, you know, and most likely that's what it will be. It, excuse me, if there's a big surge of deaths. I also think that the World War Three is coming. I don't know from where. I mean, it looks likely, you know, Russia and America. I think they're trying to get a war going there. But I, I, even if they don't get a war going between Russia and America, I think they'll get a war going somewhere. You know what I mean? Maybe it could come from anywhere. You know, it could be North Korea, South Korea, and you know, it could be anywhere. You know, I don't know. But I, I think they really are desperately want to get a war going, the, the globalists, because, um, you know, it's just another reason to scare the population. Um, it's, you know, then we, you know, we have to give up more security, more rights for for security, and introduce, you know, things like, uh, you know, all, all kinds of restrictions on us in the name of our, our safety, just like they did during the, you know, the COVID stuff. So, uh, so that's what I think is coming in the future. You know, now it doesn't have to. I suppose this is what I'm, uh, what I think um, we need. 
as, as you know, the first thing we need to do is re-establish our spiritual identity as Christian people and our ethnic identity as Gaelic people, and to understand that these are important uh, and our rights to our homeland and that nobody else can have a right to it. And we have to fight for that, maybe. You know, that if, that, if it comes to us, it, it just ha will have to be done. Um, but, uh, and the other thing then is a vision for the future. You know, like at the moment, you know, when I talk to when I talk to progressives now uh, about you know what, where do you see people going or you know Ireland or the world going in the future, and they just say like, oh, it's progress. Uh, you know, but uh, yeah, okay, but but you know, what, where do you see us progressing to? What's the uh, you know what's the aim? And you know, and they don't know. They don't. They just think, oh, we just go on, uh, and keep making progress forever and ever and ever. <laughs> And uh, I don't, I don't think it, it works that way. Um, but what, I think what we need is a, a vision for the future. I mean, what do you want? What do you want to be yourself? You know, if you had an, an if you wanted to be, if you had an idea of an ideal man or a, a ideal woman that you wanted to be, you know, you'd have that vision in your mind. What do you want? How do you want to be? And then you'd work towards that. If you don't have that vision, you're just uh, aimless. And I think as a nation. As a people, we need to have a vision too about what do we want to be going into the future. And I think what we have to realise is we have a spiritual destiny. We are, just like in the past, when we saved, uh, kept Christianity alive during the Dark Ages, I think we have a spiritual destiny to keep, um, to keep our, our, uh, the, the identity, the spiritual and ethnic identity of the people alive, of the Gaelic people and other European peoples, help them keep their, their idea, their, um, their identity is alive too, by being an example to them, you know, by showing them how it's done. I think that that's our destiny going forward. Um, well, that's what I'm going to fight for anyway. So, so that's my video for today. Um, yeah, so I just want to leave it there. So, thanks for watching. God bless.